Hello, my name is Katie Collins and I am a water resources agent for Clemson Extension. Today we're going to use this model to represent our local community. Let's take a look around. We're on the lookout for pollution. Pollution is anything introduced to the natural environment that's bad for the health of the plants, animals, and other living things that reside there. Do you see any possible sources of pollution in our community? When we think of pollution, we often think of point source pollution, which is pollution coming from one specific source. What if this factory was dumping oil into the river? Can we point to exactly where that pollution is coming from? Yes. And that means that this factory can get into trouble and be made to stop polluting. But today we're going to focus on another type of pollution called non-point source pollution. Take a look at this neighborhood. What kind of pollution do you think we might see here? How do we keep these lawns so green? We apply fertilizer. It's fine to use fertilizer in our gardens and lawn, but we want to make sure we don't use too much. Extra fertilizer that isn't used up by the plants in our yard often ends up in our waterways like streams, lakes, and even the ocean. And too much fertilizer in our waterways leads to too much algae. When algae decomposes, it uses up a lot of oxygen in the water. If there's no oxygen left, fish and other animals that breathe underwater can't survive. How can we make sure we don't use too much fertilizer? We can get our soils tested and know exactly how much fertilizer we need. At Clemson Extension, we test your soils and tell you how much fertilizer you need so you don't put out too much. Another type of pollution we often see in neighborhoods is pet waste or dog poop. This one's easy to avoid. We can just scoop up the dog poop and throw it away. That might sound gross, but you can use a bag just like a glove over your hand and throw the whole thing into the trash. And that keeps it out of our waterways. Another place that we might see animal poop in our community is on farms. Of course, it's not possible for farmers or ranchers to pick up every piece of livestock poop, but they can do things like put up fences to keep livestock away from streams and rivers. We might also see excess fertilizer on a farm, although most farmers do get their soil tested and are being careful about how much fertilizer they put out because too much fertilizer on a big old field is going to be a waste of money. How about this tractor plowing a field? If it's not properly taken care of, we might see some pollutants like motor oil leaking from the tractor. Our cars might leak oil too. We can prevent this by taking good care of our vehicles and getting any leaks repaired quickly. We sometimes see a different kind of oil pollution in our neighborhoods where some people might pour cooking grease outside where it could hurt wildlife or down sinks where it could clog drains and cause pipes to burst and leak sewage. Let's go back to our tractor. If we plow the soil right next to a waterway, rain can carry that soil into the water, but plants can help keep it in place. Let's take another look at our cars over on the road. Another type of pollution that might come from the people inside those cars is litter. It doesn't look very nice and it can be harmful to our wildlife. So don't litter and participate in cleanups whenever you can to help keep our local community clean. Our community is not looking so good right about now. There is a lot of non-point source pollution. Another word we might use for this area is a watershed. A watershed is an area of land that when it rains, all the water that hits the ground drains to the same place. So we're simulating a storm here with a water bottle. And as you can see, the water is all draining towards that pond down at the bit bottom of our watershed. And it's carrying a lot of pollution with it along the way. And now our pond is not looking so good either. I definitely would not want to go swimming, fishing, or boating in a pond that looked like that. We've discussed a few ways to reduce pollution, but we can also keep pollution out of waterways by reducing runoff. In a natural landscape, much of the ground is permeable, meaning water can filter down into the ground. When it rains on a natural landscape, the water can pass through the soil and reach underground aquifers. The ground acts as a filter, cleaning out pollution that water may pick up on its journey from the clouds. Building roofs, driveways, vehicles, and compacted soil are impervious surfaces. They prevent water from penetrating into the ground. Instead, it builds up and runs off, collecting pollution like bacteria and excess nutrients as it goes. This is called stormwater pollution. According to the EPA, stormwater pollution is the greatest threat to our nation's surface waters. This polluted runoff may flow directly into local streams and ditches or down driveways and streets and into storm drains. 
Water that enters storm drains in South Carolina is not treated. Polluted water in local ditches, streams, or storm drains will eventually flow into larger rivers. That water eventually flows into the Atlantic Ocean, carrying any pollutants it picked up along the way. Our actions at home can have long-lasting impacts for us and our neighbors that live downstream. One way you can make a difference and help keep South Carolina's waters clean is by reducing the amount of runoff that comes from your property. A rain barrel can collect up to 50 gallons of water at a time to be used around your property for chores like watering gardens or house plants, or washing your car or garden tools. Thank you for doing your part to increase the number of rain barrels being used in our community and reduce the amount of runoff carrying pollution into our waterways.